Do you want better cinematics in your Creative 2.0 map? New creative maps made in UEFN can look absolutely amazing and have intros and cutscenes like this. If you want to make your Creative 2.0 project as dynamic as possible, then this guide will help you film, edit, and get your map moving. Let's get started. All right, so you know the drill. Open up UEFN and choose the project you want to work on. Now, if you already have a map in mind, then go for it. But if you're still trying to learn the basics, then we suggest opening a brand new map so you don't mess up anything on the one you actually want working properly. Plus, it is a little easier to follow along. Once you have the project loaded up, go to the window tab up above and find the place actors option. This will open up a new menu on your left where you can control a variety of different things. For now though, find the cinematic button which should look like a director's clapboard. Now find the sin camera actor and click and drag this onto your map. Congratulations, you got your first camera. Check out some of its cool features. Do you want to be the next famous pro gamer? Then click on the link below and visit ProGuides.com. Our courses will give you insider knowledge that can help you improve your skills, win competitions, and reach the top of the leaderboards. Take a course, join a boot camp, or sign up for coaching and learn from the pros themselves. What are you waiting for? Go pro. So. About those features, you can move the camera wherever you need it to be and rotate it for just the right angle. Now, there are multiple methods of doing this, which range from manually moving the camera with your mouse or entering the specific numbers on the camera details menu on the right. You can also scale and rotate the camera using these buttons on the top of the screen. The possibilities are endless. You can also see what the camera sees so you can find the perfect starting point for a cutscene. You don't want to have a cutscene while the camera is stuck on the grass, right? Or get the camera stuck under a lake. I'll tell you what, this is looking real good. Find the right starting point and you can use these cinematics to introduce the map. Show players how cool your project looks and create something that gets them hyped to try it out. Once you find the right spot, we highly recommend you rename your camera. In a project with multiple cinematics, the last thing you want is getting lost in the menus trying to find something. So now let's get ready to insert a cinematic. Once you get this part set up, it becomes so much simpler to work with the rest of today's project. Go to content drawer under the folder my project M content. Now right click and if you keep reading under the create advanced asset, there is a cinematic bar. Insert the level sequence and rename it to something easy like map intro. Now, if you've ever done animation or video editing, then the sequencer might look a little bit familiar. This is your timeline and we'll use it to guide our scenes. In less complicated terms, everything that happens will happen in the same order as you put it on the timeline. Now, here are some other features you can play around with on this tool. You can zoom in and out of the timeline using your control and mouse wheel. You can change the FPS of the cutscene so you can leave it at 30 or potentially crank it up to 60. You can also shorten or lengthen the timeline in case you need to fit more things into the scene. Now let's add the camera we just made into the timeline. Click on track and then select actor to sequencer. You can scroll through all the items that pop up or you can make life easy by clicking on the search bar and typing in the name of the camera you made. See, naming your camera sure does come in handy. Another method you can use of finding the camera is in the outliner section on the right of the screen, then dragging and dropping. Now, you should use which other method is easier for you. If you've successfully done this step, then your screen should show you the vantage point of the camera you just placed. Now we can get started on some movie magic. But first, our question of the day. If you could improve Creative 2.0 in any way, what would you add? More features? Less restrictions? Leave your responses in the comments section below. Lights, camera, action. Now that your camera's on the timeline, place it wherever you want to start the cinematic. Now, if you want an easier time learning the basics, then place the camera so you can see the whole island from above. Then before you begin, make sure that this camera is at the very start of the sequence. You'll be able to tell by the little red icon that's appeared on the timeline. If it's not at the start, then move it to zero. Next, go to settings on the left and find the transform option. Clicking this will drop down three Three new options, location, rotation, and scale. You're gonna wanna click on the little button on the middle to add one of each to the timeline. You should now have three dots on the timeline at the start of your sequence. Now move this icon further down the timeline. Once you do this, you can move your camera a bit closer to the map and do the same thing we did before. Add a location, rotation, and scale. Not as hard as you thought it would be. Sometimes when you wanna add a location, your camera will turn to a different direction than you want it to. Don't worry, if this happens, just move it back the right direction and continue adding rotation and scale. Keep doing this all around your map. 
Get creative, go between the trees, show us the mountains, and give us a tour. Now that you've got a few points set up, try zooming out on the sequencer so you can see your whole timeline. Move the red line at the end of the sequence so that it's closer to the final camera placement. Now, if you want, you can press play and see how your scene came out. You might have noticed that the scene might have played really fast. This is because the camera will speed up to reach the end point on time. So, if you have a five second sequence and four points, the camera will hit all those points within the time frame. That's pretty fast. However, if you have a 30 second sequence with only those four points, the camera won't need to rush to beat the clock. It's still the same sequence, but now it lasts longer. So follow these steps and don't give your players motion sickness. Zoom out of the timeline again and extend the length of your cinematic. This will give you more room to work with. Create more space between points by selecting and moving each one further down the timeline. The more space between points, the more time we'll spend on each movement. The same can be said if you want to speed up a certain segment of the cinematic. You can put two points closer to each other if you want the camera to speed up during that part. Now that we have our cinematic, let's add it in. But first, don't forget to visit ProGuides.com and get your competitive fix. Crack open the content drawer and make sure you're searching under All, and locate the cinematic emitters. Drag and drop those onto the map. Then open up the Details tab on the right and you should see a series of advanced options. If the Details tab is not showing for you, then go to Window, then Details, and then select Details 1. Now back to the advanced options. You're gonna wanna see a box called Sequence, and you're gonna wanna open up your content drawer again and locate the sequence you were just working on. Drag and drop it into the box, or if you're unable, use the browse settings to find the asset and select it. Congrats, your animation is on the map, but there's something missing. Oh, right, can't have a cinematic if the game doesn't know when to play it. One option you should check out before you do anything is autoplay. Now this will unlock a few more settings for your cinematic, and you can choose to have it play during the pregame, during the setup, when transitioning, and so much more. This is how you can get the cutscene to play when players first drop into the map. But for now, let's set it up as a response to something being triggered. Go to your content drawer and find a button, any button. Now link them by using the user options function tab. Click on add function under play function and then select an actor. Drag and click it towards the button and it should assign it as the new actor. Below that, change the trigger to on interact. Now if you've done this correctly, the button should now trigger the cinematic. You can use this with a variety of other objects as well. Say for example, you have a button that players need to press to progress through a map. You can have it so a cutscene plays, showing a door opening in response to the button being pressed. This gives your players an idea of what the button triggered instead of making them guess. You can also use these sequences for death run maps to give players a quick taste of some of the obstacles that are going to be in their way. I'd say your map is looking pretty cool right about now. There are so many tricks you can use this on to really immerse the player within the world that you've created. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and ring that bell. We'll keep you up to date with tips, tricks, and more.